The king, Suratha, said, Wonderful is this that you, adorable sir, have related to me about the greatness of the Devi's act in slaying Rakta Bija. I wish to hear further what the very irate Shumba and Nishumba did after Rakta Bija was killed. The Rishi said, After Rakta Bija was slain and other Asuras were killed in the fight, the Asuras Shumba and Nishumba gave way to unbounded wrath. Enraged on seeing his great army slaughtered, Nishumba then rushed forward with the chief forces of the Asuras. In front of him, behind him, and on both sides of him, great Asuras, enraged and biting their lips, advanced to sway the Devi. Shumba also, mighty in valor, went forward, surrounded with his own troops, to slay Chandika in his rage after fighting with the Matris. Then commenced a severe combat between the Devi on one side and on the other Shumba and Nishumba, who, like two thunderclouds, rained a most tempestuous shower of arrows on her. Chandika, with numerous arrows, quickly split the arrows shot by the two Asuras and smote the two lords of Asuras on their limbs with her mass of weapons. Nishumba, grasping a sharp sword and a shining shield, struck the lion, the great carrier of the Devi, on the head. When her carrier was struck, the Devi quickly cut Nishumba's superb sword with a sharp-edged arrow and also his shield, on which eight moons were figured. When his shield was split and his sword too broken, the Asura hurled his spear, and that missile also, as it advanced towards her, was split into two by her discus. Then the Donovan Nishumba, swelling with wrath, seized a dart, and that also, as it came, the Devi powdered with a blow of her fist. Then, brandishing his club, he flung it against Chandika. Shivered by the trident of the Devi, it also turned to ashes. Then the Devi assailed the heroic Donava, advancing with battle axe in hand, and laid him low on the ground. When his brother Nishumba of terrific prowess fell to the ground, Shumba got infuriated in the extreme, and strode forward to slay Ambika. Standing in his chariot and grasping excellent weapons in his long and incomparable eight arms, he shone by pervading the entire sky. Seeing him approaching, the Devi blew her conch and made a twang of her bowstring which was unbearable in the extreme. And the Devi filled all directions with the ringing of her bell, which destroys the strength of all of the Daichi foes. The lion filled the heaven, the earth, and the ten quarters of the sky with loud roars, which made the elephants give up their violent rut. Then Kali, springing upwards in the sky, came down and struck the earth with both her hands. By its noise, all the previous sounds were eclipsed. Shivaduti made a loud, ominous peal of laughter. The Asuras were frightened by those sounds, and Shumba flew into an utmost range. As Ambika said, O oh, evil-natured one, stop, stop! The Devas stationed in the sky cheered her with the words, Be victorious! The spear, flaming most terribly and shining like a mass of fire, which Shumba, approaching, hurled, was, as it was coming along, put out by a great firebrand from the Devi. The vault between the three worlds was pervaded by Shumba's lion-like roar, but the dreadful thunderclap of the Devi smothered that, O King. The Devi split the arrows shot by Shumba, and Shumba also split the arrows discharged by her, 
each with her and his sharp arrows in hundreds and thousands. Then Chandika became angry and smote him with a trident. Wounded therewith, he fainted and fell to the ground. Then Nishumba, regaining consciousness, seized his bow and struck with arrows the Devi and Kali and the lion. And the Danuja lord, the son of Diti, putting forth a myriad arms, covered Chandrika with myriad discuses. Then Bhagavati Durga, the destroyer of difficulties and afflictions, became angry and split those discuses and those arrows with her own arrows. Thereupon Nishumba, surrounded by the Daitya host, swiftly seizing his club, rushed at Chandika to slay her. As he was just rushing at her, Chandika clove his club with her sharp-edged sword, and he took hold of a dart. As Nishumba, the afflictor of the devas, was advancing with the dart in hand, Chandika pierced him at the heart with a swiftly hurled dart. From his, Nishumba's heart that was pierced by the dart, issued forth another person of great strength and valor, exclaiming at the Devi, Stop! Then Devi, laughing aloud, severed the head of him who issued forth with her sword. Thereupon he fell to the ground. The lion then devoured those Asuras whose necks he had crushed with his fierce teeth, and Kali and Shivaduti devoured others. Some great Asuras perished, being pierced through by the spear of Kaumari. Others were repulsed by the sprinkling of the water, purified by the incantation of Brahmani. Others fell, pierced by a trident wielded by Maheshwari. Some were powdered on the ground by the blows from the snout of Varahi. Some Dhanavas were cut to pieces by the discus of Vaishnavi, and others again by the thunderbolt discharged from the palm of Aindri. Some Asuras perished themselves, some fled from the great battle, and others were devoured by Kali, Shivaduti, and the lion. Here ends the ninth chapter, called The Slaying of Nishumba, of Devi Mahatmya in Markandeya Purana during the period of Savarni, the Manu. The Rishi said, Seeing his brother Nishumba slain, who was dear to him as his life, and his army being slaughtered, Shumba angrily said, O Durga, who are puffed up with the pride of strength, don't show your pride here. Though you are exceedingly haughty, you, resorting to the strength of others, fight. The Devi said, I am all alone in the world here. What other is there besides me? See, vile one, these goddesses who are but my own powers entering into my own self. Then all those, Brahmani and the rest, were absorbed in the body of the Devi. Ambika alone then remained. The Devi said, The numerous forms which I projected by my power here, those have been withdrawn by me, and now I stand alone. Be steadfast in combat. The Rishi said, Then began a dreadful battle between them both, the Devi and Shumba, while all the Devas and Asuras looked on. With showers of arrows, with sharp weapons and frightful missiles, both engaged again in a combat that frightened all the worlds. Then the Lord of Daityas broke the divine missiles which Ambika discharged in hundreds with weapons that repulsed them. With fierce shout of whom and the like, the Parameshwari playfully broke the excellent missiles that he threw. Then the Asura covered the Devi with hundreds of arrows, and the Devi, in wrath, split his bow with her arrows. And when the bow was split, the Lord of the Daitas took up his spear. 
With a discus, the Devi split that spear also in his hand. Next, the supreme monarch of the Daityas, taking his sword and shining shield bearing the images of a hundred moons, rushed at the Devi at that moment. Just as he was rushing forward, Chandika split his sword with sharp arrows shot from her bow, and also his shield as bright as the solar rays. With his steeds slain, with his bow broken, without a charioteer, the Daitya then grasped his terrible mace, being ready to kill Ambika. With sharp arrows, she split the mace of Shumba who was rushing at her. Even then, raising his fist, he rushed swiftly at her. The Daitya Lord brought his fist down on the heart of the Devi, and the Devi also with her palm smote him on his chest. The Daitya King, wounded by the blow of her palm, fell on the earth, but immediately again he rose up. Seizing the Devi, he sprang up and mounted on high into the sky. There also Chandika, without any support, fought with him. Then the Daitya Shumba and Chandika fought, as never before, with each other in the sky in a close contact, which wrought surprise to the Siddhas and sages. Ambika then, after carrying on a close fight for a very long time with him, lifted him up, whirled him around, and flung him down on the earth. Flung thus, the evil-natured Shumba, reaching the earth and raising his fist, hastily rushed forward, desiring to kill Chandrika. Seeing that lord of all the Daitya folk approaching, the Devi, piercing him on the chest with a dart, threw him down on the earth. Battered by the pointed dart of the Devi, he fell lifeless on the ground, shaking the entire earth with its seas, islands, and mountains. When that evil-natured Asura was slain, the universe became happy and regained perfect peace, and the sky grew clear. Flaming portent clouds that were in evidence before became tranquil, and the rivers kept within their courses when Shumba was stricken down there. When he had been slain, the minds of all the bands of Devas became overfull with joy, and the Gandharvas sang sweetly, and others sounded their instruments. And the bands of nymphs danced. Likewise favorable winds blew. The sun became very brilliant. The sacred fires blazed peacefully, and tranquil became the strange sounds that had risen in different quarters of the sky. Here ends the tenth chapter, called The Slaying of Shumba, of Devi Mahatmya in Markandeya Purana, during the period of Savarni.